everybody. Welcome back to another live stream with Montana Outdoor Science School. My name is Melanie. I'm one of the instructors here with Moss. Today's topic is all about comparing corn snakes. We uh, at Moss try to get kids excited and interested in science. We want them to be able to feel like they grow their knowledge base for science. We want them to leave Moss with a sense of stewardship for their environment. So we try doing that through all kinds of manners. We try to get them to do activities that are science related, whether that's experiments, whether that's games. We also have uh, animal ambassadors with Moss. Our animal ambassadors are animals that we have in our care that we use for educational purposes. Purposes. But today is a little bit special because I actually have two animals to show you. I have our corn snake from Moss, Maisie, who is right there in her tank. And I actually have my own corn snake that I have uh, here at my home. And his name is Hobby. Hobby is short for habanero. I'll talk a little bit more about that later but I wanted to show you guys two animals that we have an opportunity uh, to share with you. My corn snake is not necessarily an animal ambassador, meaning he is not an educational, hands-on snake. I don't bring him to classrooms or to students or let students hold him necessarily. He stays here at home. Uh, however, in a video setting, he is a great guest to be having. Um, and there's a few things about him that I wanted to show you guys. Let me get my camera turned around. Oh, I forgot to mention, we, since we are revisiting corn snakes, I have posted a few questions for you guys to answer that you can think on while we have some moments to pause. Where do corn snakes live in the wild was something that we talked about last time. Also, why are they called corn snakes is something that I'm curious if you guys can remember or if you have a theory about. Please place your answer in the comments for us. We'd love to be able to see that. Again, uh, where do corn snakes live in the wild and why are they called Called corn snakes. So go ahead and type that in whenever you have an opportunity to do so. Let me show you guys my corn snake again though. So Hobby, short for habanero, uh, he's called habanero because of his color and his color is actually really hard today to tell what it is because he's about to shed. Something we did not talk about last time with snakes and reptiles in general is how they go about shedding and snakes are particularly cool in that sense. Uh, with snakes, what they end up doing is they will start to darken in color. Hobby is kind of a dusty color right now. You might recall how Rosie was sort of this vibrant red and gray color. Uh, and, that, and then uh, Hobby here, he's usually a very vibrant yellow and a vibrant orange on top. But he's kind of that dusty grayish uh, kind of... Uh, color on him right now because he's about to shed and what ends up happening with corn snakes and snakes in general is all of their skin all the old scales will come off in a single thin layer at once together and what that ends up looking like is he'll start from his mouth he will kind of open his mouth really big like he's doing a yawn and then he'll literally crawl out of his skin. He'll just sort of take it off like a big old sock and it comes off usually in one piece. If it comes off in one piece, that means it's he, that it's a good humidity in his tank, means that he's got a really good temperature for his tank as well. If it comes off in pieces, it could be that his tank's a little dry. It could mean that he uh, maybe isn't in a good uh, temperature setting. So his shed can help us indicate his health. And that's the same for our two corn snakes at Moss, Rosie and Maisie. He is getting excited now that he is warming up. He's been on my hands for a few minutes now, which means that he has kind of absorbed the body heat. And because he is a cold-blooded reptile, he cannot make his own heat. And now that he is warming up through my hand, he is kind of getting a little bit more hard to control. He is wanting to move around everywhere. Pretty cute little guy. If y'all recall, they use their tongues to help them smell as they are exploring their world. Oh, and something else I wanted to show y'all. You might remember that I mentioned snakes don't have eyelids, but they do have a single scale over their eye. Let me take a look, see if I can get y'all to see his eye right now. So he, <laughs> he has, uh, <laughs> he has 
kind of a dusty eye. It's not what you might see in like old animals where it's a cataract or them going blind. His scale on his eye is going to end up shedding with the rest of his skin and so it darkens at just the same way as the rest of his skin does. And when he sheds you can see if he's had a healthy shed because they call them eye caps. You can see if his eye caps came off with him as well. Let me try another method. I'm gonna just get right up close to him. All right, stay there, Javi. Oh yeah, there we go. Can you see the dusty color on his eye? And that's the same across his whole body. Typically, when you have a snake that's about to shed, you don't wanna be handling him too much because this is my own personal snake. Um, I am comfortable with him and him and I kind of know each other's behaviors and habits. He knows to uh, be docile when he's being handled anytime. And also, he recognizes that even when he is shedding, if he's being handled, he's in a safe place. Uh, I wouldn't do that necessarily with Moss's animals, but I am comfortable doing that with my own snake. So kind of another benefit of having a guest animal on the live stream today. Yeah, take a look at that. Oh, another thing that I wanted to go over was a comparison between a male corn snake and a female corn snake. So with the male corn snake, there's some differences that the female doesn't necessarily, uh, aren't necessarily as obvious. Because they are reptiles, it's hard to tell just from looking at them from the outside whether they're male or female. But there's this funny little trick, and it has something to do with their tail, actually. So looking at Hobby's tail, there's a point on his tail called the cloaca. And the cloaca is essentially his tail vent. It's where everything that comes out of his body is gonna come out. So that's his scat, that's any uh, urine. And the same thing for Maisie, she also has uh, cloaca, but for her, since she is female, <clears throat> the cloaca is also where her eggs will come out if she were to ever lay eggs. Let me show you uh, the tail area now with Hobby. On him, you can tell where the cloaca is because, let me see if I can get his tail to flip over for you guys. That would be really special. Oh, nice. He slowed down again, which is great. It means he's easier to handle. Hi, Hobby. All right. Yes, here we go. So, take a look at this. On his belly, do you see how there's horizontal lines all the way down? That's just one scale. There's a point, however, along his tail where suddenly, oh, sorry, it's fuzzy, everybody. Let me see if I can get to focus just right. Oh, it was, I tried practicing earlier and it became very easy then. I'm having a little difficulty now. Let's see, maybe if I put him in a darker setting. Well, you can almost see it. On his belly, oh, there we go. On his belly, he has those horizontal stripes that go all the way down, showing that there's just one scale on his belly. And do you see this point? I can't point to it because I'm holding the camera with one hand and holding him with the other. But there's a point right, uh, right there where the it becomes then two different scales. There we go. Can you see that? That is right where his tail vent is, or his cloaca. Notice how long his tail is right after his cloaca. It is a very, very long tail, and that is due to his anatomy. That's just simply so that all his organs can fit in his body. Versus on the female corn snake, we'll actually start to see that the tail end is a little bit shorter. So for him, his tail after his tail vent Oh, it's so long. I can hardly stretch my fingers across it. We'll see on Maisie, hers is going to be a lot shorter. I should mention a few things about Hobby, too, on a personal level. He is about six years old or so. We got him when he was just a tiny, tiny little corn snake. He wasn't any more than six inches, maybe. Uh, and he is not done growing yet. He will continue to grow pretty much through the whole of his life. When he gets to the later adult stages, he will uh, slow down in growth. Um, but for now, he is probably, I'd say, almost four feet long, maybe maybe just under four feet long. So that's Hobby for you folks. I wanted to show y'all him. He's pretty neat. Let me put Hobby away now and I am going to then get out Maisie. It's going to take me a moment. I'll let y'all take a look at the questions. There. And if you can, please feel free to answer them in the comments. I will be right back folks. Here we go, Hobby.
As always, if you do have any more questions, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. We always love to answer your questions. Someone is always ready to help out uh, in answering those, and I can as well uh, if I see the questions in time. Sometimes I get a little distracted by the camera though. I'm easy. All right. So now I'm gonna show you guys our female corn snake from Moss. Maisie. And you can see Maisie already is a lot brighter than Hobby was. That's because she's not about to shed. Her colors and her pattern are also a little bit different too than what Hobby's were. Oh, let me get my camera out on her again. So going straight to that notion of the cloaca. Well, actually first let me talk about her age because there is an age difference between her and Hobby. Hobby's about six years old. Maisie's age is actually unknown to pretty much all the staff at Moss. My guess is that she's somewhere just over 10 years or just under 10 years old, which means that she is a bigger snake overall. Uh, when uh, corn snakes end up being full grown. There's not a whole lot of difference between males and females. Males typically are a little bit bigger than females, um, but not by a lot. So let me show you guys her tail and where, oops, come here, crazy. So her tail in comparison to her body, her cloaca starts right about here, but you can see being a much, much bigger snake, I mean, I have to back way, way up for you guys to be able to see her. She does not have quite as much after her cloaca as Hobby does. So I wanted to show you all that. Also, let's take a comparison and look at her eyes. You can see, oh, she's excited. She wants to move around. You can see that she does not have nearly that dusty, same dusty color on her eye scale the way Javi does. I think I'll pick her back up so that she can relax for a little bit. Come here, Maisie. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, today is a feeding day for Maisie. It is her meal day, so we are going to be doing a live uh, feed of her eating. If that makes you uncomfortable, just know that that's coming. I'll talk a little bit more about that too as I've got her here. Um, with the live feeds, we don't feed her any live animals. We receive our mice frozen and then we give the mice to her after we've thawed them out. I'm sorry she's moving around so much, everybody. Ah, uh, yes. Do you see her eye caps there? They're not very, very uh, dusty at all. Oh, good. She's relaxing. Yes. What a good snake. She's a great ambassador snake because of how docile she is and how easy she is to take care of. Um, I really enjoy having Maisie and handling her. <laughs> What a cute little snake. So we will be feeding her in a little bit. Uh, she is going to be feeding in her tub, that same one that we showed you in May, uh, Rosie in. Um, but know that it's not a live animal. Know also that it's not uh, gonna be anything gruesome or anything. It's a really interesting thing to watch just because she, as a snake, doesn't have any limbs, so she can't uh, pick up her food. She also doesn't have teeth to tear into her food like a lot of carnivores do. So she has to eat uh, everything whole, which is funny. Da, da, da. So I noticed somebody talking about how long Hobby is. Hobby is about four feet, just under four feet. Um, and Maisie is probably four and a half, just under five feet, I would say. Maybe I'm getting a little bit excited about that measurement. Um, it's always so hard to measure a snake just because she or they are uh, moving and they never really straighten out all the way. I mean, you can see she's even got herself curled up in my hands. Makes it a little hard to get her to sit very still for uh, much Oh, I wanted to talk about too, though, since we do have a male and a female, we could talk about the reproduction of corn snakes, which is an interesting topic. Uh, corn snakes, because they are a very popular pet, are often bred in captivity, but there's some special things that you have to do if you ever bred them in captivity. You have to replicate the weather or the climate that they're in as if they lived in the wild. So let's talk about corn snakes in the wild then. 
with corn snakes, they will uh, not mate until the springtime, which is true of many animals, but very specifically, they'll mate between March and May after they have gone through a period of brumation. Brumation is not quite hibernation. Hibernation is a true uh, state of inactivity, whereas brumation, they can be a little active. Their body temperature is lower than is usual, but they're not necessarily totally asleep. They're not going to be uh, completely inactive. However, they are very calm. They rest for a long time. And during, after a period of brumation, that is when they will then go searching for a mate. Females after mating will lay their eggs after about a month or so. And then two and a half months after the eggs have been laid, they will, oops, sorry everybody, they will uh, hatch all those eggs. And hatchlings are really cute. Like I said, we got Hobby when he was just a baby and based on his size alone, I think we received him maybe a week or so after he was uh, hatched. Um, and again, Hobby is my personal snake that I have. Um, whereas, oops, Maisie, She's been with us long enough now that no one really remembers when we got her, so it's hard to say uh, even how old she is. Going back to the eggs, though, something I learned just today in my efforts to kind of research corn snakes some more is that often snakes have a very leathery shell that they will emerge from. Oh, man. You can see she's trying to move around. She wants to get her, uh, she wants to get her tail around something so that she can be, be holding on to something. I think what I'll do is I'll set down the camera, put her in her feeding bin, and then I'll continue to talk about snakes while she is getting ready to feed. So everyone, just so you're aware, we are going to be feeding Maisie here. Uh, please be aware that it shouldn't be anything uh, too extraordinary but if you are uncomfortable with the idea of a snake feeding just want you to know what's going on there oh man she's so excited she took my rock again we feed snakes in another bin because if we feed them in their tank that they live in they may start to associate food coming into that tank and that could be a problem if you ever want to pick up a snake no don't take my rock again you silly corn snake. So we put her in a different feeding bin to make sure that she knows this is where she belongs and this is where she's uh, associating eating with. I'm going to close her up so that she can kind of get used to the motions there. All right. Going back though to corn snakes and their eggs, I found out today that snakes often have very leathery uh, eggs that they are hatched in. The reason being is it makes it easier for babies to get out when they start to hatch. Let me put her mouse in her tank with her, then we can watch her process of eating while I talk more about snakes. Here you go, Maisie. Oh yeah, what do you got there? She may eat, she may not eat, we'll see. We'll find out here in a moment. Um, snakes, though, when they're born, as with many reptiles, have something called an egg tooth on their tip of their nose. What that is, is it's a scale that helps them to hatch, and they can use it to kind of cut into their egg. Since their egg is a little leathery, it's a bit flexible, it makes it very easy for them to open it up with their egg tooth, which is a very sharp scale. They don't uh, have their egg tooth for very long after they hatch. They do drop that scale after the first, first shed or so. Um, but when they're born, they don't emerge out of the egg right away. They actually open up the egg themselves with their egg tooth and then they'll just sit inside their egg. And if you've ever noticed with chicken eggs or any bird eggs, there's often a yolk in an egg, and that's the same thing with snake eggs as well. The yolk is something that keeps the baby uh, 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 getting nutrients while it's growing inside the egg, and so after an egg technically hatches, those baby snakes will stay in the... Oh, hi Derby, you gotta be out of here Derby, sorry. <laughs> um, the eggs will technically be um, uh, uh, 
full of nutrition for those baby snakes as they're about to hatch. It may come down to Maisie doesn't eat today, and that's okay. If she doesn't want to eat, she doesn't have to. What we do tend to do, though, if she doesn't want to eat, is we'll try to blow the scent of the mouse towards her. Let me see if I can get something to happen. She may be a little nervous too, or a little shy. And if she doesn't eat today, that's okay. I noticed someone asked, uh, "How did Hobby get his name?" Hobby get his name. Um, so Hobby is about the color of an orange habanero. Habaneros are, of course, a type of pepper. And so we named him kind of after that color there. Oh, she might get excited. She might want to go for it. So after she does consume her mouse, uh, the best way to handle her is to not handle her very much at all. Mostly what we'll end up doing is we'll take her and just put her directly from one tank to another. Um, we don't handle her or play around with her anymore. And this just allows her to not be stressed while she digests. Something to note too about corn snakes is that they are typically um, a constrictor in the wild, meaning that they constrict their prey to kill it. Because our corn snakes with Montana Outdoor Science School have been so docile and so used to being fed an animal that isn't alive, they often won't constrict their food. They'll usually just bite it and start to try to swallow it as soon as they can. So that's something that's kind of interesting. It's a big difference, too, uh, between ha uh, Maisie here and between my own corn snake, Hobby. Hobby is the same way. He's only ever been fed uh, thawed out mice. He's never been fed live mice, but he does tend to constrict his food. And I'm not entirely sure what the difference is about that. Um, and I'm not sure what to conclude from it either. But as he's gotten older, he has begun to constrict his food. I have noticed with both Rosie and Maisie, neither of them constrict their food. I'm going to try one thing to kind of get her excited about eating everybody. I'm going to put my phone down again. Uh, once more, if you are able to answer these questions, go ahead and put those into the comments section. I'll be right back. I'm going to get myself a little tool to try to help Maisie get excited about her food. Alright, so I tried blowing on her uh, her mouse there. I tried to get the scent of it towards her, and that didn't quite work. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to entice her by moving it. And this may get her to realize that it's something that she can eat. Do you want it? She may take a bite out of it. We'll see. Oh, there she goes. Yeah always happy and satisfying to know the snakes are hungry and want to eat the mouse. Check this out everybody. What she will do now is she's going to walk her jaw along that mouse until boop, there she goes. She's got it on in her mouth now. She does have really tiny teeth but teeth on corn snakes are so small they're almost impossible to even see. Uh, for Maisie, because she's a little bit bigger, I can sometimes see them as she opens her mouth or as she yawns really big. Maybe we'll get a yawn today. That would be really exciting. But it's never, uh, they're never so large that it's apparent. And they're also all facing backwards. This helps her to kind of grasp that mouse as she's swallowing it. She, you can see she's walking her mouth back and forth to try to get it to go down her throat there. Always a fascinating thing to watch. What I especially enjoy about seeing her eat is notice her eye. 
it kind of moves separate from her jaw and you can see her jaw almost come up and it's almost like her cheekbone kind of moves around her eye and I've always thought that that was interesting and fascinating. Wow, she's almost got it down just like that. Hopefully we'll get a big yawn out of her. If we can get one big yawn out of her, I'll be pretty excited about that and we can probably call it from there. I always say too to my students when the snakes are eating, I always think that they look so happy. I mean, look at that face. It's like a big smile, biggest smile you ever saw. Oh, now's an opportunity. We may be able to see in her mouth a little bit more. Oh, neat. For snakes, they have to be able to breathe still when they're eating which means that even though there's something in their throat, they can't breathe necessarily through their esophagus uh, the way we can. Um, instead, they have a little tube that's kind of on the underside of their jaw. It might not be easy to see with hers, but that tube will open and close and then allow them to still breathe uh, even as they're eating, which is pretty neat. And I think eventually it does connect to their... Uh, um, throat area or esophagus area. She may not yawn for us today. Oh, but can you see how her jaw is just a little bit open still? It probably means she will yawn to reset her jaw. Last time we talked about how snakes, when they are feeding, their jaw will separate. Um, you can feel it on your own jaw, right on the front, on your chin. There's kind of a little bump there. On snakes, that little bump is not connected, meaning that both halves of their lower jaw can spread. Uh, and can open up big enough for them to be able to take on uh, their prey that they're eating. I wonder if she'll yawn for us. She may not yawn for us. I don't want to keep you guys too much longer, so I think I will close out from here. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Be sure to join us on Wednesdays at 11 and also Fridays at 11 uh, so that we... Uh, can show you all the new fun bits of knowledge that we have going on throughout the week. Again, my name is Melanie. This is Maisie. And we had our guest, of course, earlier, earlier, Hobby. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you guys next time.